excited to have a very special guest here today on the Dogs Podcast. As we mentioned in the open, we're joined at the table with Cleveland backs running, Cleveland Browns running backs coach Stump Mitchell. Coach, it's awesome to have you here. Glad to have, glad to be here. <laughs> you're you're right in my back of my uh, my uh, neck of the woods. I literally can see my house from here. <laughs> so this, this is the closest a Cleveland Browns coach has ever been to my house. <laughs> um, we appreciate you being here, taking the time to come sit down with us. Uh, you're down here with the Tuscarawas County Browns backers. But we appreciate you taking a few minutes. This is awesome. Having the opportunity is great. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and di- we don't want to take up too much of your time. But we'll go ahead and dive right into these questions. Um, what does it mean to be the running back coach for a team with such a rich running back history like the Browns? Well, it's awesome, especially when you have a cali- first t- first class caliber running backs, uh, first class caliber offensive line and tight ends and receivers that will block. So uh, it makes our job a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> I, I, uh, speaking of the, the running backs, obviously Nick Chubb running back. We always I argue with people he's the best running back in football. The Browns have always we've had good players before that the team the, you know that the the fan base is, has liked. But what do you think it is about Nick Chubb that has really like endeared him to the fan base so much? I mean he's he's everybody's favorite player. What is it about him as the person and the player that everybody just kind of gravitates to? I think he shuts up and does his job, <laughs> and he's loud when he's running. <laughs> and I think I think that's what the fans love. Yeah. You don't hear him complain about anything. You just hear him go to work and do his job. Is he? Is he as quiet as he seems, or is he like one of those guys where he's quiet in public and you get him behind closed doors and he, you can't get him to shut up? Or is he really just like that lunch pail kind of guy? If you've ever seen any of Nick uh, weightlifting stuff on Instagram yep. or anything like that, he's at his high school. He goes back during the off season and he trains his high school track team. He gets his training there. He's, he's, he's a no-nonsense guy. Uh, all he wants to do is win. Uh, all he wants to do is inspire other young men and young women to be successful, work hard, and uh, that's who he is. We, uh, we could use a no-nonsense guy in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess since we're on the topic of Nick Chubb, I mean, you've kind of explained it, but what's it like for you as a coach to coach that kind of a running back with, you know, with his talent? And we, we think he's the best running back in the league by far. Just as a pure runner, he's amazing to watch. Well, I got one goal for myself, uh, and that's to hopefully get Nick through this year without having a fumble. That's been the that's been the deal, uh, and something that that we we're working on all the time. He's only had one fumble uh, a year, right. but that's something we don't want to have because right. it, it really cost us uh, last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not many things Nick do wrong, uh, but unfortunately in the Miami game it, it it cost us, it hurt us. We were about to score in some way or another, either a field goal. We were already in. in position or it, we gained I think six or seven yards on the first down but unfortunately we put that one on the ground and uh, so that's the main the main goal uh, continue to do our ball security drills hopefully it won't happen but uh, if it does then we just move on it's not it's not a big deal uh, but it, it's something that that's my goal to try to get through the year uh, that Super Bowl game without having a fumble at, at all. Is it hard when you're coaching a guy like Nick Chubb? He does so many things great. To it's almost like you don't want to nitpick him, but like you're constantly trying to improve him. Is it hard to find things to like focus on like that, or like you got to come in with little goals to, to kind of keep yourself from being like, well, this guy's good. I don't have to worry about Nick. Oh, I don't mind Nick picking Nick at all. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's not a whole lot to do. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, proper position on pass protection. Uh, Pressing uh, the the run track, Nick will probably go all year, and he will probably have about I would say fifteen runs where he probably could have pressed the run track a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, if if we can if we can improve upon that, uh, I think he could probably lead the league in in, in rushing, regardless of. Even though those guys may have still a hundred more carries than he will, yep. it doesn't matter. Right. If we can, if we can improve upon that, he can still lead the league in rushing because he's averaging uh, 
over 5.2 yards a carry. Uh, if we can improve upon that, I think he can average maybe six yards a carry. <laughs> and, and, he can, and he can lead the league in rushing. So when I nick pick Nick, it's, it, he understands there's big yardage that we left we left on the on the on the field. Yes, so, Coach, um, you used to play in the '80s as a running back, and um, how has that running back position changed just over the years till today? And just you know, I don't know if anybody's seen your like highlights or anything like that. You were kind of a bad man back in the day. I, <laughs> I, I watched some YouTube stuff, and I was like, oh, oh, but second. I, uh, Josh pulled it, but second all-time in Arizona's all-purpose yards, correct? Correct. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's, That's really awesome. And the tape is great. If you haven't seen this, the tape is, it is good. It's good. But just how has it changed? Well, I think back then, uh, most of the backs were first through three. Mm-hmm. You know, they, you played first, second, third down. Yes, it, and we didn't go for it back then on fourth down. Mm-hmm. That is, the game has changed so much now. Uh, but most teams now are playing two backs. That that wasn't the case yeah. when when Otis Anderson wanted to come out of the game. Then then I went in. But other mm-hmm. than that, you really weren't going in 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 the ball game. Uh, we we had six backs for the most part. My deal was returning kickoffs and, and yes, punts. That was the deal until I became the, the starting running back. But uh, with with these guys, Nick. He first, second, third down. We we gave Kareem the third down, but Nick could have easily did that. Yeah. Uh, and you know, right now, uh, McCaffrey, he's first, second, third down guy. Exactly. He can right. do it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, if I, I think in our system, Nick's going to be able to do that as well. I think mm-hmm. all the backs that we have, Jerome Ford can do that. Yes, sir. Uh, hopefully, uh, opportunity. And hope, hopefully, opportunity is John Kelly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'll be able to do that because if he gets an opportunity to play, he's a stud. He, he'll, yeah, yeah, he's a stud. He, he's gonna yeah. make a name for himself. Yes, sir. Yeah, he flashes every time he gets in touch. Absolutely, field. absolutely. Yep. Uh, his his contact balance is just just unbelievable. Uh, he does a heck of a job on the scout team preparing the defense uh, for whoever we're playing, and uh, he does a great job uh, giving a good look on on scout team when it comes to. Uh, any 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 phase of the special teams. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully he will get an opportunity this year, and if he does, it's going to be great for us. What a blessing to have such a just just <laughs> deep depth chart just to just work with. I mean, yeah, no question. Uh, Demetri Felton, you know, we brought in a few years ago at uh, UCLA. He was both. Yeah. He he uh, was a good running back, but he was also a good receiver That's as right. well. So hopefully uh, those guys will get an opportunity. We have all we need. Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, Coach, uh, you actually brought up Jerome Ford, and I wanted to ask you a question about him because uh, the four of us all thought he was a steal in the draft, and we've been super excited, uh, and he looked good last year at times. So uh, what kind of production do you think we're going to see out of Jerome Ford this year? I think it's all going to be based on uh, the opportunities that he get. Uh, I don't want to put anything on him because, uh, really, uh, Jerome Ford, at, at Cincinnati, he, he he rushed for I think like thirteen hundred yards. He had a six yard per carry average. Uh, he's a very talented guy. He he has great hands. He's got great speed. Uh, can make defenders miss. So uh, I look for nothing but production from him. But uh, that's because everybody else is going to be doing their job as well. Awesome. That's awesome. So yeah. if if we can just do one last thing real quick, just can you give us a quick background of where your nickname Stump came from? Uh, well, I was playing football against guys probably three or four years older than I was, and uh, when I graduated from co- when I graduated from high school, I was only 155 pounds. Uh, I couldn't get a scholarship any place except for the Citadel. I had a chance to walk on there, and uh, uh, Bobby Ross was the head coach at that time. Uh, Ralph Regan was the offensive line coach, and the guy that recruited me uh, actually got me an opportunity to play there because Johnny Newton and uh, Mr. Calvin Newton, they were guys from my hometown that actually attended the Citadel, and uh, they got me a chance to, to go there. That's awesome. That's awesome, right? Well, uh, we won't take up too much of your time. you got a lot of people here you want to hang out with. Uh, again, we appreciate you sitting down, giving us some time. It was awesome to meet you, uh, and good luck this season. All right, thanks for the opportunity.
Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.